Hello everyone, my name is Eskar and today I'm going to talk about complex analysis based in complex algebra and control mapping. I'm going to start with basic current complex algebra and move to control mapping, which is the main topic for our section. So uh, the purpose of this lecture is to show that uh, some real, real math can be really interesting, real mathematical, really beautiful and really applicable. So, and there'll be a bonus section at the end. Uh, so let's start with a quick review on the complex numbers. Uh, as you know, Z is written, or complex numbers, Z can be written this way, where X and Y are real numbers, and X is called a real part, and noted like this, and Y is called an imaginary part, and noted like this. And if you don't remember, I is just one of the square roots of negative one. So let's see how does actually our polar, uh, looks like in the space. So if we have, this is going to be, x axis is going to be a real axis and y axis is going to be imaginary axis. So it means that here it's not going to be just one, two, three, it's going to be i, two i, three i, and in the real part it's going to be one, two, usual numbers. So for example, number z, three plus two i going to look like two i here and three here. So here are our z. So we have two i on imaginary axis and three on real axis. Also, it's very important to know how does the equation look like in polar coordinates. So it looks like z equals r cosine phi plus i sine phi. And as usual, r is just a distance from to origin from z, from z point, and phi is an angle between real, real axis and the vector. Um, there is one really important theorem that used a lot in complex analysis for polar coordinates, and that if we have two numbers, z1 and z2, and we multiply them, then their lengths when multiply, and the argument is going to sum up. Very important formula, we used a lot in uh, complex analysis. Now let's take a look at conjugated module. Uh, conjugate of z is just not like this, and it's just like that imaginary part have a different sign. So we just multiply by negative one, the imaginary part, and we get the conjugate. So the module of complex number will define a little different than we used to define a module. So define like z square equals z times z conjugate. And let's show really quick that z times z conjugate is actually a real function, not a complex. So it is x plus iy times x minus iy, which is x squared x times i y minus x i y times x cancel each other out. So we have negative i squared y squared and i squared is negative one. So we have x squared plus y squared. So this is a real function, which means that we can know like module z have to be greater than zero. So the actual value for module z is square root of x squared plus y squared. And it's a real function and positive. So let's move on to the uh, differentiation of a complex function. Um, as you can see, the definition is almost the same, and this thing looks 100% the same. The only thing is the limits. Uh, the limit for a complex function uh, exists if the limit of real part exists and the limit of imaginary part exists. Um, there are four main types of function that we define in complex analysis. They are real to real, complex to real, real to complex, and complex to complex. So what does it mean when I say that? I mean, if you have function f of z equals to z w, then real to real means that the argument z is real and the result w is real. So complex to real would be z is complex and w is real. So um, real to real is that what we do in Calc 1 and Calc 2. Real to, complex to real have very nice derivative. It's actually say here that it's either zero or does not exist. So very, very nice derivative for uh, complex to real. And for real to complex, there is this, you can simplify to this formula. There is no real simplification for complex to complex. Uh, as we do in real to real, there is just some nice ones, some don't nice ones, some you can, some you cannot de derivative have a derivative. So we just need to do case by case. Okay, let's move to the main 
section of the day and it's conformal mapping. Conformal mapping is a transformation that preserves local angles between curves and orientation of the curves. So for example, f of z, so what is transformation? It means that if we have f of z on some domain z and transform domain z into range w. So this is a transformation. For example, this is z and this is w. See, it looks like a square and now it's something different. So this is actually a conformal mapping. What it does, it's, as you can see, all the angles here are 90 degrees. And they still are 90 degrees. You can see they all still 90 degrees. So it preserves an angle. So, and you're gonna ask me, why do we want to do that? This this picture looks very ugly. In fact, we can do we can do it back, for example, and now the picture looks much better. Much better. So we, we do a conformal mapping on an ugly picture that we don't like. We do conformal mapping. Now we have a very nice pictures that we like to work with. We know how to this works. And we prove some things for the new picture and then trace back the results from new picture to the old ugly picture. So we can prove something for ugly picture without actually proving anything for ugly picture, which is really cool. So let's say, what does it mean to function to be conformal? So it has to be holomorphic and analytic. And uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, it differentiable on the domain from both sides. And the derivative must be non-zero everywhere. So let's talk a little bit about uh, why do I start doing this? Why do I start doing this project? So in my Calc 3 class, I saw this equation. It looked really simple, but very interesting. Because and it turns out that they called kosher riemann differential equations, and it's actually conditioned for analytic function or conformal function. So it's in order for function to be conformal, it has to satisfy these conditions. And let's actually check it for, for f of z equals z squared. So f of z, let's say, equals to u of xy plus i of v xy. This is actually what written here was mean by i and v. So u is just real part and v is the imaginary part. So for z squared, we're gonna have x plus i y squared which is a real part is x squared minus y squared. Because if you open the brackets, uh, i squared would be negative one, and plus i times two x y. So this is our u and this is our v. Let's check du dv, partial derivative of u dx, and it's going to be two x, right? And partial derivative for dv, dy is also 2x, right? This one for y and this one for x. And so they're equal. First condition satisfied. And second condition, du dy equals to y. Uh, equals to negative 2y. And dv dx equals to 2y. And then they have negative one difference as we can see here. So z squared satisfies this condition. Now let's look at the picture f of z equals z of z. So, uh, so that means that z squared is an analytic function. Uh, so let's paint our vertical lines in the red and horizontal lines in the blue. Then we're gonna have that each angle between blue and red is 90 degrees. And so we usual, usual, how the, our usual uh, plane looks like, right? So if we have make a, conformal mapping f of z equals z squared, which we just proved that is conformal, then the, as you can see, the angles are preserved. So these angles are still 90. All degrees are still 90. And the obviously blue lines are horizontal, that used to be horizontal, and red lines that would used to be uh, vertical. And there are some more examples like f of z equals e to the z, also preserve so all angles in conformal mapping and like some weird function like this one and looks like some ear or something and z cube looks very beautiful so as you can see already this um, 
figures looks very, very different and for different types of uh, conformal functions, we have very, very nice and different pictures and we can run them back and they're actually beautiful and very interesting. So uh, let's move to the application. It's, it's actually can be really, besides it's very interesting and uh, it can be really applicable. So it, uh, control mapping is used in cartography, physics and engineering. There are large, a lot of problems for physics and engineering and fluid mechanics, electrostatics and heat conduction. So for example, here, this is him of uh, electrostatic field and uh, the thick solid lines are conductors, thin solid lines like with potential lines and dashed lines are electric fields. So the angles are actually 90 degrees everywhere. So when we do control mapping, we can do control mapping from A, from A to B and we're going to have very, very nice pictures you can work with. And they actually do that and work with that one. So as you said, as you can, as I mentioned that we do that and people in physics do that because after you do a control mapping, the picture looks way better and you can work with it. Uh, also used in brain surgeries. So for example, the brain, there is an analytic function, conformal function that transforms it onto, uh, onto, onto sphere and all angles is preserved so you can do operations and surgeries looking at that picture or as a computer can help you looking at that picture and which is really cool and uh, also it's used in 3d art so if you do something in 3d they actually use a conformal mapping for 3d models so it's pretty cool how something that really just math can be beautiful interesting and very applicable and I'm going to show you a really extra bonus section that it can be really, really beautiful. So now it's going to be a Julia set. So Julia set is just a recursive formula that looks like this. And for each number C, there is such thing. There is such a nice picture. So we pick number C and then we check for Z0. If the limit of, and we, and we pick a Z0. If the limit for this Z0 and for this new uh, recursive formula don't go to infinity then we say that z0 z belongs to the Julia set if it's and you know, we draw it with a fadeable here black if it doesn't belong we do it white and the same here and actually if you start zooming in it's not going to end it's not like that just like that's it that's how picture looks like if you zoom in it's going to look the same not the same but in different patterns but still if you're zooming in it's you can zoom in infinitely long time and still going to be zoom 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 actually i'm going to show it so here they're not like doing something they're just zooming in it's already done picture they zoom in zoom in zoom in into parts and it changes so thank you everybody for watching i hope you like it uh, bye bye